Okay. We're on. Call the meeting to order tax committee meeting uh, August 1st. Done. I need a motion to approve the minutes from uh, June 20th. Make a motion. Deb, John, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Motion's carried. Action agenda. So is this uh, Hunden Strategic Partners? Is that who we're looking at? You are. Good morning. Uh, all four, all three of you are from Hunden? Um, no. <clears throat> we also have David Greisel from Convergence Design, oh. um, who will be utilizing on our team for this. And we look forward to introducing you to him. Okay. Go ahead. So you have a proposal for us? Well, uh, yes, we do. We um, actually, we'd love to ask you some questions as well. Um, we've uh, we've been pleased to uh, work with you all over the past year on a tourism assessment for the county, uh, as well as uh, metrics to measure your tourism. And then uh, towards the end of that process, you, it, you issued a, a pretty broad uh, topic, RFP, uh, soliciting ideas to move the county forward in terms of tourism. So we responded to that um, with a proposal to actually move forward in, in the analysis of the three recommended items from our prior study. Um, since your prior study was a broad um, tourism analysis that that sought to um, close the gaps on seasonality and uh, uh, figure out how to get more group activity and winter activity. Um, we identified three items that we believe would help do that during our prior study, which include the um, ski resort uh, hotel, uh, youth sports complex, and then um, another compelling event to help bring in tourists during um, times of the year where it's not peak season, um, either the mud months or, or more in the winter. Um, so we have a deck that we can show you um, if you want, but um, I think we would love to hear from you all since the, since the request was so broad. Um, I think it will be helpful for us to hear from you for a minute, if you don't mind. It would be great to understand who's in the room, um, what the intention of the RFP was, given it was very broad, and then we can we can we're happy to answer any questions. But we believe that what we have proposed to you is the smartest way to move forward, based on the good work that you had us do um, just in the past year. Does anybody want to take that question? Uh, so, what was the question again? The question is: Can somebody tell us what your intent is for who and what? The, I would say if the who, what, where, when, why, and how you expected to get an apples to apples response to this RP as it was really broad. So we're, we believe that what we're proposing to you makes sense, but your proposal is so broad, you could have received proposals from developers, you could have received proposals from any flim flam artists trying to sell you anything. And who knows um, that that would have magically solved your your um, your tourism concerns. So we're just we would love to hear from you first before we talk a little bit more about um, kind of what drove the um, RFP description and what you hoped you would receive as a result. I can answer that question. Uh, this is actually a conversation that began in the ARPA committee, uh, the American Rescue Plan Act. Uh, we we had a, have still a large sum of money uh, to allocate uh, from ARPA. We also are sitting on a, a, a large uh, reserve uh, in Octax. Uh, and so one of the things that we discuss in these meetings, uh, in, in our tourism committee meetings, 
uh, and our economic growth meetings are what are the ideas that are out there that we're not thinking about? So that's why we put out a very, very broad RFP. We have uh, resources available to potentially invest in those outside of the box ideas. And we got a whole variety of, of, of responses back, just as you said. Uh, and uh, we, we, we're taking a look at all of those. Uh, some of them uh, 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 we've already released. It wasn't exactly what we were looking for. Others we will uh, put in front of a new tourism director when that person is hired. Uh, but there were there were some, uh, in, including those that are in front of the committee today, the, including the, the, res the response submitted uh, by Hundit uh, that we thought were, were very, very interesting that we are in, uh, interested in moving forward with. Great. Okay, good. Well, that's super helpful. And yeah, I would, I would definitely say that, um, you know, as in, in any kind of type of placemaking or product development in tourism, um, you know, you, you absolutely want to do your homework first, uh, and then go ahead and move through the advanced planning stages if something becomes feasible. So yeah, I was just curious, because like I said, it sounds like you may have gotten some ideas for product development that um, you'd want to study. Um, so it, 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 I would be, uh, I'm going to show you what we proposed, um, or just tell you more about us again, but you all know about us. So I'll sort of make that quick. But, um, my thought would be if you had, um, if you had interesting ideas that did not bubble up during our prior study that you want to assess before just throwing all your eggs in one basket, I, it would make sense to me for you all to have us study those as this interim step to assess all of these ideas that have come your way, including ours, but others as well. And then at the end of that, we'll let you know um, what makes the most sense to move forward with what those costs would be um, to develop that. Uh, if you had to develop it on your own, if there is a public private partnership that could result um, from it, or if it could just be a private investment that you attract someone to do whether it's an event or a physical placemaking asset. Um, so that, that would be my recommendation. And so that's, uh, it's good to hear that context. So um, I will briefly share my screen and sort of take you through um, what we have for you. Cause I think you just had a, a short amount of time for us today. Um, all right. So just to just to show you who's on the line today, we've got Laura not pictured because she she uh, helped put together the the proposal and she's our VP of Business Development. Um, then you've got me, Rob Hunden, Hunden Partners, Ryan Sheridan, uh, project manager for this project, um, and he is on today. And he um, he was instrumental in the five hundred plus page um, tourism assessment that we did for you over the last um, nine months or so. And then we have uh, David Greisel from Convergence Design, and I'll have him introduce himself in a minute. Um, but we find that it's uh, we team with David on probably a third of our projects because it's imperative that if you're going to be assessing a new project um, for feasibility, market feasibility, financial feasibility, you kind of need to know what it's going to look like and how much it's going to cost. And so he uh, does that for us and for our projects and, of course, for any other projects that his firm is designing and, and uh, developing. So I'll let him uh, talk about that in a second. Um, again, just some uh, refresher. I've been in the placemaking business for um, about 28 years now, starting off at the city of Indianapolis and then moved up to Chicago, started my firm 16 years ago. Um, and have worked on over a thousand projects and studies and have about $20 billion in projects built or in the pipeline right now. Um, and love to teach on the subject, uh, love to speak on the subject and, and sort of bring um, thought leadership to uh, placemaking, uh, both through economic development and tourism development, uh, which is where we intersect. Uh, there's just a little bit of Cool picture showing that and discussing it. David, why don't you give us a little bit about Convergence Design? Yeah, good morning, everybody. I'm David Greisel with Convergence Design. I'm the founding principal. We are a design firm located in Kansas City that really specializes in 
public assembly architecture. Um, what I call the ABCs of it is arenas, ballparks, convention centers, but really any uh, large uh, public gathering space where big numbers of people come together. That certainly includes a large number of youth sports facilities. And um, our, uh, our facility focus really aligns very well with Rob's firm and what he does because uh, one of these types of facilities is almost always involved in the study that Rob is doing, which is why we collaborate so often. And we have collaborated with Hunden on a number of projects, a very large number of projects all over the country, uh, literally coast to coast. Uh, we've also worked in Canada. Uh, recently, we did a project in upstate New York in Ithaca for uh, a conference center there. Um, but uh, we, we uh, really try to focus on uh, early stage feasibility, site planning, site analysis, figuring out what fits on a site, uh, figuring out, you know, helping Rob to figure out the program and how big a, a thing needs to be and then eventually what it will cost. Yeah, and David has worked with us, like I said, for 15 years um, and anything from a small, small venue all the way up to he's designed two major league ballparks, um, the one in Pittsburgh and uh, in Houston. So um, multi-talented on, on all these fronts. And so we rely on him a lot for for any kind of uh, help as we move through a process. So um, I think um, one of the one of the graphics I don't have here is one that shows the pathway towards development. Um, and there are really eight steps uh, in the pathway towards development. And one of the and the first five are doing your homework to understand is something feasible. Um, and so, you know, you're looking at site analysis, you're looking at market feasibility, you're looking at financial feasibility, then once you come up with an idea, and then you're looking at economic and fiscal impact. If this is not something the private sector would do, is there enough return on investment for the public sector to rationalize an investment by the public sector? Um, and then if so, then you figure out, okay, how are we going to pay for it? That's the next step after that. And then finally, um, you go into implementation. And so if it's just a public project, not just, but if it's a publicly funded project, um, you're obviously going to be going out for bid and all of that kind of thing. If it's a public private partnership or a private uh, development, then you, uh, then we, actually run the procurement processes to procure the private sector partner that would either partner with you on the development uh, to either invest in part of it or manage the facility or, or whatever the product is that is developed or uh, would actually build the whole thing for you. For example, a ski resort hotel, um, that would be a, a private investment uh, by a private a private firm, uh, but it might need some public incentive. And of course it may need to have sewer lines and other things extended out there, which would be part of the implementation process that we would help with. But we cover all of those things to get you from point A uh, to Z in terms of shoveling the ground. And, and that's, that's our role is product development. Um, and product is not only physical assets, but also events. So we would be um, assessing uh, different kinds of events that that you could that you could do, and given that you have a large sum of money to implement a project, this is like I said, this is the first step after our study, which we've proposed a you know less than hundred thousand um, dollar budget. Then whatever comes out of that in terms of what makes sense feasibly. Uh, and you, we all agree, whatever that one or two things, maybe it's all three, or maybe there's something else. Maybe you throw some of these other ideas at us that people had um, asked you to um, consider. We'll look at all of those different things and let you know what makes the most sense. And then we can make a go forward plan to actually get that done. And so there would this would be the first step in a multi-step process uh, to do that. Um, so and just as a recap, like I said, a thousand uh, projects and studies all across U.S. and Canada from 5,000 person towns, small things to, you know, New York City, Chicago, L.A., you know, everything you can imagine in between. And all, again, at that intersection of 
tourism development, placemaking, real estate development, and event development. So um, it's all of those things. And here's that graphic that I was talking about. For some reason, I didn't think it was in here. And here it is. So again, what we're proposing is one through five. And then whatever comes out of that, uh, we would get into the uh, implementation, figuring out how you pay for it, that six, and then seven and eight, if it's got a private sector involvement in it. Um, in terms of the kinds of studies that we have done, <clears throat> they range, uh, done over 600 hotel studies, 150 plus youth sports stadium or arena studies, um, and, and many districts and events. Um, I would say the event side is the one we've done the least of. We assess events uh, often, um, but looking at, I would say that we have looked for Pierce County, um, Washington, uh, an events analysis to help them figure out what would be new and unique that we could come up with that would fill our calendar. And so we came up with a, a number of ideas. We've done that for a number of our tourism clients around the country. And so that's on the event side. So I would say 90% of the time it's on the physical asset side and 10% of the side it's on the event programming side. Um, so all the same things that um, you, you see there. And then in terms of um, this was your this was your request. And we, we've discussed that as you, as you may or may not know, um, since um, I, we didn't work directly with you all on a day to day basis, but we were very communicative and we are always communicative in our process. Um, we would, you know, have our discovery process with you as we did last time we come to town, meet with everyone. Uh, tour around again, uh, make sure everybody's on the same page with what the goals and and uh, and outcomes are expected. We um, you know move through that entire um, process, and then we check in usually every couple of weeks. Um, so there's a circle back conversation that occurs after we meet with you about ten uh, days later. And that's where we determine when we're going to give you our next check-in, which is the big preliminary findings presentation to show you what we have found in terms of the viability of these items that we're studying. Uh, from there, once we get on the same page with you, if there's any discussion about the direction we're heading, um, we get on the same page there and we start running demand and financial models to understand the real cost benefit analysis uh, from a private perspective and a public perspective. Um, we submit that draft to you. Uh, we get comments back from you, and then we move into the final analysis. And so that's uh, really what is in this study. And then, as I mentioned, there are many steps then in advanced planning to get to, or several big steps to get to actual implementation. So in terms of what's in our um, scope, we will pick up where we left off in assessing the competitive environment and the opportunity for sports infrastructure and related events for uh, uh, hotel development and for special events. And we would look at case studies to show you what's been done elsewhere. So beyond just your competition, we're looking at peer, peers and best practices around the country. Um, and then we get into drawing recommendations, drawings and cost estimates for um, whatever we come up with. And obviously the events are going to be a little bit different than a physical structure. Uh, and again, we get into demand and financial modeling and the economic, fiscal, and employment impact analysis. Um, some of these items we looked at uh, previously. So again, we're picking up where we left off and we're doing a deeper dive. So we looked at the county and your peers last time and your competitors for summer and winter tourism. And we did assessments at a high level of in the different categories, what everybody had in terms of theme parks and water parks and um, uh, sports and events and convention and meetings and all of that kind of thing. Um, and even at 500 pages, which I don't know if you saw of them, it's an, an extreme amount of work. I think it's probably the biggest tome we've ever produced of, of tourism assessments and data. Um, there was, there's still more to go, which is why we recommended that we then do a deep dive and, and drill down. And these studies will be much more petite 
uh, than what you received from us before, uh, because they're very focused and and um, they're not so wide ranging, uh, whereas you were really assessing everything under the sun before. Um, so you look here and this shows you how we look at all of the um, this is how we determine feasibility. We look at the industry, we look at the competitors, the demand, the supply, the location. Um, in, in your case, uh, often, uh, you know, the infrastructure comes up. Uh, also, the, the workforce, is the workforce there? Um, and is the infrastructure there? But also, is the market there? Uh, so we look at all of those things to help uh, figure it out. And then we get into the projections and the impacts and go from there. Um, on our timeline, uh, we have about a three to four month timeline. Uh, we'll have that big check in um, about week 10. Oh, my bad. All good. All good. Got to love Mondays. Right. Um, and uh, and then we would have our draft to you by week 14 and then uh, finish up uh, week 16 or the end of four months. So it's a pretty quick process. Again, if you have great ideas or ideas that intrigue you from others, which we'd be really excited to hear and see, we would be happy to add those to the mix. We might have to, depending on how many there were, we might want to extend our timeline just a little bit, but we've given ourselves a pretty good, uh, normally if we're, if we're doing just one, we're studying one thing, we would have our check-in at week six or seven. So we've given ourselves a little buffer here in case you wanted to add other things into it. Of course, our fee would change if you wanted us to study additional ideas, um, but we have some we have buffered in some time there to assess other ideas in addition to the three uh, that that we came up with. So, and then I just um, was going to show you some quick highlights of um, some of the work that we. Um, did before. Uh, we don't need to belabor it other than just to remind you, I really do hope that you had a chance to look through it all. And um, so, we, yes, here's our, our deeper dive, which I've explained, and just some examples of how uh, deep in the detail we get as we're assessing this, because often our work, whether it's in report form or PowerPoint form, ends up uh, as part of a public bond offering or a private financing. So uh, these are just examples of some of the things that we've uh, worked on with you and with others. And so we use all of the technology and tools at our fingertips, including the geofencing tracking, which uh, you could see in some of these prior ones, really show you where people are hanging out, where they come from, um, uh, where they spend time, as well as with um, running, walking, hiking, boating. So we have a great ability to assess the viability of really any idea. Um, we're working on a big project right now just over the border in, into Canada. And uh, so all of these things really help tell a story. And then at the end of the day, we get into the nuts and bolts. This is something that we haven't had a chance to do for you yet, but all of this leads to the financial statements. So we run detailed uh, pro formas for all of the projects that we, that we assess, whether it's a hotel or a sports complex or anything else or an event. We run the, the, the P&L for it, as well as the impact analysis. David does the drawings, the budgets. Um, we kick out what the impact would be on the county. This is for a Great Wolf Lodge in Collier County, Florida, where Naples is. Um, and we did the 30 year impacts and they had a bunch of taxes there that are positively impacted. So it was $181 million in net new taxes to the county over 30 years. But it's obviously it's a mega, mega project uh, with 500 keys and, and all of that. But we get down into the nitty gritty for all of it. So um, just to wrap up. Uh, obviously, we've worked for you all before and it was a good experience. Um, we've done the same thing for Temple, Texas on a destination development master plan, but then also detailed feasibilities of um, five or six different projects for them, different ideas that they have. Sun Prairie, Wisconsin, same thing. Great Lakes Bay, Michigan, and on and on it goes. So just the highlight reel here that I'll run through on sports, uh, projects that are built and successful uh, others that we say, nope, it doesn't make sense. But we've done enough homework with yours to, to say confidently 
um, that these have passed the smell test. And now we have to get into the nitty gritty to understand uh, the true viability. But uh, this is a mixed use sports district with retail and restaurant um, in Overland Park, Kansas, which is near um, David, actually where David lives. Um, and this has indoor youth sports and uh, an entire mixed use district of, um, of retail, restaurant, hotel, office, and uh, apartments. So um, these things can be pretty big scale and really put you on the map if, if you do these. Same with, um, uh, this is in Long Island, Suffolk County, big mixed use, which includes indoor and outdoor sports. Um, so many examples all across the country, happy to discuss and answer any questions that anybody has. I'm so glad that we understand uh, better the, the concept. We did the hotel at the end of Navy Pier, which I think is instructive for you because that was a situation where we did the study uh, of the overall pier first, sort of like your county study. Then we did a deep dive on the hotel itself um, and made the recommendation for a 225 key uh, upscale uh, full service hotel on the end of Navy Pier in Chicago. And then we moved into implementation. So we had three different contracts with Navy Pier in succession. The third one was us going out for developers uh, where we you know, convinced everybody that it wasn't a done deal, that Chicago is a, not, a, not always a, a dirty place to do business. And so we were able to get, um, I believe, six or seven qualified proposals, proposers uh, to submit teams. And we picked the best team. And the project is open. I have stayed there, even though I live there. Uh, and it has been a great success, even though it had to open uh, during the pandemic. So um, we, that is how we move these projects um, from concept to reality. Um, doing the same thing for a Relay and Chateau luxury lodge for the Makers Mark Distillery campus in uh, the middle of nowhere in Kentucky. Um, so... We do these studies um, about 50 to 60 times per year. So we're very excited to be able to continue with you and assess our ideas as well as ideas that have bubbled up uh, through your other submitters. And we'd be happy to discuss adjustments to the, um, to the proposal uh, so that we could assess all those things for you. So anything you can imagine, we have looked at the world's largest Noah's Ark. Uh, so there you have it. So why choose us? Uh, place making grounded in analytics and best practices. Um, we'll give you an actionable to-do list and not a plan that sits on a shelf. Um, we'll give you um, uh, solutions that, um, that uh, reflect what you have, the tools in your toolbox. We will tell you the truth. And I don't know why the word Indiana crept into there, but um, in any event, uh, we're familiar with the financial tools available to you in New York State, um, which are much more restrictive, unfortunately, than in most other places. And so we'd have to um, definitely be creative in how we worked on uh, solutions to the uh, to the options there that you have. So would be happy to open it up to any questions that exist at this point. Anybody on the committee have any questions for Rob? No. Mr. Chairman, it's Mike. All right. So, Rob, I, I'm sorry, I'm remote also, but Hello. I'm, hi. I'm, so, I'm just curious. You have some sense about what might work here from a financial standpoint. Um, what are some of the options that you think would be able to draw private investment to help make something happen here in the county? And what types of different things, you know, just from the get go, you think might work? Well, at the end of the day, I mean, private capital is risk capital. So there has to be a sense from the from the private sector that that risk is going to be rewarded. Um, and so uh, what the what where the public sector comes in is bringing some certainty to that or to the extent that there's a lack of certainty or there's a question about reward, or it could be, you know, you could lose all your money, all that, the public sector then can come in and say, well, we've secured these other things, like, for example, land, um, we've provisioned a site for you, we have, you know, we have all these other tools that we can reduce your risk profile, so that 
what you're investing in Mr. Private or Mrs. Private Sector or Mrs. Private Sector is uh, something that you do well every day of the week. And we're taking care of the things that are the, the wild cards, right? So for example, on a, you know, on a, on a, on a hotel that is outside of the, the sanitary district or the sewer district, um, to the extent that you can extend the, the sewer lines and provision land and, and all of that, those would be ways then where the, the private sector, they do hotels all the time. They would be more than happy to do that if those other things were taken care of. Um, on a youth sports complex, um, that's a little bit different. Um, typically, while those can, especially, well, indoor and outdoor can generate net operating income, it's typically not enough to support the upfront capital expense of the project. Um, and so even the most successful um, youth sports projects out there um, are, not, are not privately funded. There have been a couple, but they've, some of, many of them have struggled. Um, so what you typically see is the private sector likes to get involved in managing the facility to maximize out the impact and um, the utilization of the facility. Of course, there's a fee involved in that, but um, they would make some investments. For example, if they had a 10 plus year deal to do that, a lot of times you can get the private sector management companies to invest upfront in the project for the for the uh, chance to have that 10 plus year uh, operating contract. You can do pouring rights. You can do naming rights. Um, so there are a number of ways you can um, do that. Um, there are also other things you can do, for example, in a youth sports venue um, from the private sector, like have uh, physical therapy offices. So there's uh, restaurants, bars, those kinds of things. And you can actually develop um, what we're seeing more and more, like I suggested to you in Overland Park, Kansas, or showed you there, is the ability to actually develop a mixed use district around uh, sort of that hero in the middle, which is the, the event generator. And so um, one of the things that we're, one of the concepts that we are working on all across the country right now is the, the district financing concept. And that is um, communities like yours and all over, Suffolk County, um, Pawtucket, Rhode Island with the USL Stadium and District, um, the Deer District in uh, Milwaukee, uh, the new proposed deal uh, for the NHL in um, in Arizona. The, all the, the concepts are this. There's always going to be that thing in the middle that needs uh, upfront public sector development help, uh, whether it's a convention center, sports facility, you name it, performing arts, whatever. But it generates the activity um, that synergizes well with retail, with restaurant, with hospitality, hotel, with um, an often uh, office and, and residential. And if you can create a district around or build something in a district where you can create a tax increment recapture zone uh, from that development, then you, you create this synergy where the private sector development which is generating property tax, sales tax, hotel tax, maybe a food and beverage tax or a hamburger tax, as they sometimes call it. And you can recapture those increments from the new development that can fund the thing in the middle that does not, that, that needs the help up front. Um, and so those, that is the new kind of um, major trend that we are working on probably a dozen times a year right now. And as I've mentioned, from youth sports all the way up to the pros, um, but it can be true with anything. It could be true with um, your a, a ski resort district or or anything um, is, are these sort of multi incremental tax capture zones, or I call them synthetic or super TIF uh, zones uh, that are project finance oriented. So that's how you get private investment to benefit a public asset and pay for it essentially. So there, and like I said, we're working in New York state right now in Suffolk County at Ronkonkoma station on Long Island uh, with a big, big mixed use development that um, they will have to do something like that too. Um, New York is a little bit different than most states, but, um, but that's, that's the concept that, that is working around the country. We're, we're working on it all over the place. 
Thanks, Rob. Mm -hmm. You all set, Mike? I am. Thank you, Dennis. Okay. So we put out a proposal. We've had a response. You want to add anything, Gene? Uh, your proposal is 96,000? 96, 96,000, correct. Rob, is it 96,000? That's correct. Does somebody want to move this? Gene, a second. Deb, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Carried. Gene? I'll make a comment now after the vote. <laughs> um, very well uh, initiated to their, their, what they're doing. They've been really good to us. Every time we call, we get the answers we need in a, in a reasonable time. And I, I think they uh, will continue working for us. Great. Good job. Look forward to working with you guys. Well, great. Well, that's a pleasant surprise. I mean, I, I, I'm glad. I'm not surprised, surprised, but we were just, I'm so curious to, you know, to jump in and find out these other ideas that you received. And again, if you do want us to add those into the mix, uh, we can talk about adjusting the, our scope and fee. But either way, uh, we're just so curious what came your way because it was such an open-ended request and can't wait to work with you all again. Really appreciate it. Excellent. We're looking forward to it, Ram. Okay, great. Well, have a great week. It's a good way to start for us, for sure. Good way to start August. Exactly. All right, guys. Take care. Thanks so much. Thank you. Yep. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, and the funding source for that? Uh, Chester Town is going to put that one. <laughs> Well, let me check my wallet. <laughs> we we uh, we have our tax funds. We, huh? Out of reserve or already? We uh, we contemplated having gone to ARPA, but decided to do it this way. We we have uh, uh, the fund balance right now. Uh, Lisa, tell me if you have a different number. I think we should have the same number. Uh, yeah, that, that's three million nine twelve four seventy eight, and that does not include the million dollars that we keep for cash flow. So uh, that that's, this is a, a, we thought it was a very good one-time expense. Uh, and we, we have that reserve that we, we can, we can spend down a bit. Um, well, you're up. Give me a second, Bill. I'll be right back. Oh. Yeah, they should. They should. Chesterton, I went up to you, come up to Firefighters thing, check 
Um, smoke eaters. Yeah, it was, uh, it was crazy. I didn't realize, you know, I was trying to figure out a different way. But what did the light? Yeah, so I imagine taking a trolley through it. So I had to figure in 15 minutes of that. Hang on one second, Walt. Uh, I need a motion to uh, appropriate the 96,000. From Debbie, second, John, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carry. You happy? Yeah, me too. <laughs> okay, well, you're up, buddy. Thank you, Dennis. My name is Walt Adams, and it is a pleasure to be here with you. Oh, sure. Yes, thank you. The podium. Thank you. Thank you. And again, uh, starting out, I do want to thank you for this opportunity to uh, make my presentation to you. A little bit about myself, uh, 40 years of plus of radio broadcasting. After 40, I stopped using numbers. It doesn't feel good. <laughs> 40 years of radio broadcasting. It started out when I was eight years old. I had an idea that I wanted to be in broadcasting. So my dad bought me a crystal set, if you remember what those were. And in my bedroom upstairs, I had a little crystal set. And if my mom is in the kitchen and moved it to just the right spot on the dial, she could get my radio broadcast coming from my room. So it started rather humble and ended up uh, working for major multi-million dollar corporations like the Merv Griffin uh, Corporation, as well as Barnstable Broadcasting, uh, Anastas Broadcasting out of New York City and other companies. Uh, my forte has been as an operations manager at these various locations where I was able to run multiple stations. In each time I had the gift to be able to work at these different locations throughout the Albany Capital District region, I was able to do local radio, local programming, which I think is the key to any radio station these days because of all the multiple platforms that are out there. But if you do local radio and start talking about things happening in Warren County or Lake George or Glens Falls or Queensbury, uh, you're not gonna be able to get a lot of that information anywhere else, whether it's Spotify or any other internet, you can get this local information on Lake George Radio, which is where we currently run. But I have that the uh, opportunity to work at various different uh, locations in, in Albany. Uh, doing features was something that I really looked at uh, as a way to connect people with good, compelling radio content that brought them in. And then an advertiser could be associated with that to help pay for sustainability. So the idea was creating uh, features that were interesting. And uh, through uh, the many years of uh, doing this, I was able to uh, do things like Buckle Up New York, which was the first seatbelt campaign for New York State. Uh, which I worked with the New York State Police on that, and then created uh, radio advertisements and public service announcements that were played and sent out to all the radio stations in New York. Um, also, a postcard from Weawaka was something I was very proud of to talk about the rich history of Weawaka uh, and its uh, ability to help women who were looking for respite and uh, won an award from the New York State Broadcasters Association for uh, uh, that community service program. Uh, also, uh, the Adirondack Moment, uh, sponsored by the Adirondack Folk School, telling people about the various things that were happening in the Adirondacks. Uh, the Lake George Quadricentennial was a major event for Lake George, and uh, I created a half hour documentary that played out in the visitor center. Uh, each day when you walked in, you, this played out for two years uh, on a loop. And it was a real pleasure to be able to document through video and through uh, researching the history of uh, Lake George and the, and the corridor between uh, Albany, New York and Quebec that came through the waterways of the Hudson River and Lake George and Lake Champlain. So um, I really enjoyed doing those kinds of things, interviewing people, deep diving into the history of our area and creating compelling and interesting segments on the radio. Uh, also, uh, most recently, and, and certainly in, the, in uh, correlation with uh, this, um, I was able to put together a program uh, back in uh, 2019, which was my COVID-19 reports for the Saratoga station, 
uh, Glens Falls and Lake George Radio, in which case we also won an award recently from the New York State Broadcasters Association for uh, excellence in broadcasting and serving New York. Uh, those were daily reports and giving people information that they couldn't get any place else. So that was something we were very proud of. And that's the kind of programming I love to do. A little bit about the company I'm working for now, Loud Media. It's a family owned uh, company. We have a base in Saratoga Springs, New York, on Congress Street, where we have offices and equipment set there. We have a radio station uh, there, Saratoga Star Radio, uh, Glens Falls. We have uh, the country station that is 94.1. And then in Lake George um, is where I have my headquarters in a complete basement filled with uh, studio equipment, several monitors, and ability to run all five stations that we have uh, from that location. We have our tower. We are fortunate to be able to get on the top of Prospect Mountain, which covers from Ticonderoga to Clifton Park, but primarily serving Warren County. That is our focus and that is our main interest in uh, this particular proposal as well. Uh, WLGR were a set of call letters I tried to get for three years. It would belong to the uh, US Navy it was a Navy base radio operation. They finally went dark and I was able to grab the call letters for WLGR, Lake George Radio. Um, and then uh, about five years ago, I was able to obtain the domain name, lakegeorgeradio.com. And I've been sitting on that for, a, the, now we're just a little over a year old, but we were able to get that for our streaming. And that's critically important now, as we know, terrestrial radio has its place, but certainly streaming worldwide is really the connection that makes us uh, a much more uh, viable entity, particularly for this project, because we know that many people come to the region from all over. And some people just love to know what's going on in Lake George. May they live in New York City, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, uh, California, Florida. If they can always tune in and find out what's happening in their favorite destination getaway of Warren County, they tune in uh, through streaming at lakegeorgeradio.com. So that's a little bit about uh, our, our company. Um, the proposal itself is something that we're, we're looking at uh, that would be a way to promote Warren County in many different facets of, of Warren County. Uh, we propose a, a year long program that would run every day, twice a day, and it would be updated each week. And through each program, we would like to create that interesting, compelling content that talks about things that are happening with production elements, sound effects, um, and working closely with uh, Warren, Warren County to create those uh, pieces, um, particularly when it comes to uh, attractions, things that maybe people don't know about, some of the little hidden gems in the county that people may not know about. Sometimes when you pull up on Google search, you may get only the things that are listed that have been paid for by that search, whether it's Yelp or uh, TripAdvisor. So this would be open to anything uh, that was happening in our region. Events uh, certainly would be a big part of it, uh, but it also would include uh, uh, some of the things that people would maybe find out the history as well as the activities going on. The letterboxing program that's been successful most recently with Warren County is something that we would do a feature on. This feature would change each week, again, run in the most important times of the day, morning drive at 720, our highest listening uh, post in the morning, uh, where I do the morning show Monday through Saturday, and then in the afternoon at 520, which is also a uh, very peak time for people to be in their cars and listening. So it would run each day. A consistent message is usually the best way radio works over time, giving a consistent message about imaging, about branding, about talking about the positive things happening in Warren County. So that's kind of in a nutshell what that would be, but it also could include other things as well. And beyond the idea of putting in this program, I would like to offer also um, if we can uh, put together a partnership so that this would have a feature that would be consistent and run twice a day, every day, but also have a partnership with the county where at any time, anyone could call me or text me or email me and talk about an initiative that's important to you, whether it be recycling or maybe it's something uh, about uh, uh, emergency management. Maybe there's weather related information. Maybe there's a bridge close. Whatever that is, my phone would always be available to do an interview 
I can do it from my studio at any time at a moment's notice and have it on the air right away. So a partnership with Warren County that would include any asset uh, that uh, we want to do, it, mainly it's talking about the positive things happening. Uh, we really truly believe in good stewardship. I think uh, being a good uh, environmentalist when it comes to keeping Lake George clean and the surrounding waters in Warren County, um, good practices. Uh, we do a boaters report every day that runs four times a day. In that report, we talk about the conditions on the lake today, but also followed by a tip. And those tips are about etiquette at the boat launch, the clean drain and dry stations to have your boat inspected, um, a good uh, you know, boatsmanship on the lake. If you see somebody who's stranded, you stop and see if you can help. Uh, you know, uh, five mile an hour zones that you wanna make sure that you stay within five mile an hour. Boaters tips that can also help educate the public in their use of Lake George and area waters of Warren County. So that's kind of it in a nutshell. Uh, I'm very passionate about what we do with Lake George Radio. I feel uh, really blessed to be able to work in a place like Warren County where I just uh, love and have always loved being a part of the uh, recreational part of Lake George, but also I've promoted hundreds and hundreds of different events in Lake George, MC many, many concerts and uh, also helped out with many fundraising events as well. I uh, work part-time with AIM Services that they help uh, over 2,000 people with disabilities in Warren, Washington, and Saratoga County as a public relations director for them. I do all their events. We have our croquet tournament coming up uh, next week where we'll have uh, an opportunity to raise funds for people with disabilities. So um, these are the kind of passions I have. I really look forward to uh, working with the county in any way that I can, uh, particularly when it comes to new initiatives or new things happening, getting the public informed about some of the great things that are happening in our county. And open up for any questions for anyone. Anybody got any questions, Gene? Oh, I, I just have a comment. I think this is a great project. And if we just heard from Hunden that takes care of, of the private sector and, and, the, and the public sector. I think this is the kind of project that I think we should get involved. John? So 720 and 520, how long would the uh, airing be? Ideally, we're shooting for two minutes, but um, our research says that we can go up to five minutes. It's, it's an important uh, initiative or something that's interesting and compelling. Five minutes would be probably the maximum before some people start to think, well, I'm going to tune out because it's too long. So anywhere between two and five minutes, uh, no real restriction on the exact time, but whatever that content fits, it makes it sound natural. Go ahead. So I'm a private enterprise. I'm going to have some food trucks and a flea market at my hotel up in Lake George. I'm going to call you and you're going to help promote me. It's, it's certainly something that I would consider uh, anything that's going to be, first of all, a legitimate event. And then, uh, you know, maybe do some research follow up all these reports that I do. I want to be able to do spend a full day on research and understanding exactly what it is. But yes, if there's something. Yeah, but there could be a problem with that because you're using public funding. You know, using public funding, you cannot promote private individuals. And that's where working through Warren County on whatever it is that was going to be, that would be what I would do. So Warren County would be the gatekeeper of everything that goes. Absolutely. There. Everything would be pre-recorded, sent for approval. After approval, it would go on the air. So this would be two minutes twice a day for 24000 a year. And that includes the production work, like I say, the research work. It would probably take a full day just to do research and then a, a full day to do the production work on it. And that you guys that have available now because I know I'm going to be back in town in the. Uh... Mike, uh, mute yourself. So, yeah. I see what you're saying, John. Um, all right. So, how is anybody going to know, especially visitors to the area? that you're going to be airing some events that are going on in Lake George area at 7.20 and 5.20. I would like to add 60 promos per month that would promote the times that they run and some of the little bit about the features that you'll find. If you're looking for something to do in Warren County, stay tuned 
and give the times and continually promote that. And then in the live shows of both myself and my afternoon drive girl, Tracy Villamay, uh, we would both be talking about coming up. And wait, I don't have a name for it. Uh, just off the top of my head, it was Warren County Adventures, but I'd like to work with the county on that to decide exactly what the name was. So we are agreed and then uh, move forward on that too create the first one and send that for approval. Sure. <laughs> Anybody else? Uh, I'd just like to make a comment. He, uh, Walt has a show uh, once a week, the mayor and I sit down with him and, and uh, we discuss an individual topic. Uh, it's very well received. I, I can't tell you how many people have stopped me and said, hey, I heard you on the radio. Uh, I think this is a great opportunity for us. It's it's uh, local and, and it's, it's widespread enough. I think it would be a great opportunity. I think we should, should at least try it for a year. I've been working closely with the chamber, with Gina's office, and that, that's been a, a great partnership uh, where they're directing me with certain information about events that are coming up oftentimes with Warren County, whether it be the Adirondack Visitor Center or the, uh, the Maple, uh, you know, events that come out in the spring. Uh, we'd like to, you know, kind of follow up on, on that kind of relationship where in close coordination with the chamber, uh, we're promoting things happening. But it wants, I want to do that positive, upbeat, uh, professional sounding, uh, something that you guys could be proud of if you were driving down the road and happened to tune into it. Thank you, Walt. Uh, Gina, would you like? Wait, 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 we do it. Uh, so we have a call in with somebody on our staff, and each week we, we rotate between a message with regard to the CDP, the following week a message with regard to the Welcome Center, and the next week a message regarding the chamber activity. So we rotate that. You know, like coming up one week, it'll just be about the, the marathon that's coming up, the triathlon. You know, so we'll we rotate that through every week. Different kind of message, and then it's run several times throughout the week. That's part of our game. Great, thank you. Anybody else? Oh, that much. Somebody want to move this? Yeah, Did sure. you have some? Oh. We can we can assign to all to something like that. Could also get involved with that. Great, you know, yeah. Branding of that'd be perfect. Challenge. Sure. Yeah, I I would envision. My apologies. I would I would envision this as being very much something. Tourism is involved in, you know, what the priorities are from week to week. And uh, we have Don Lehman as well, who can run point on it. And it uh, doesn't necessarily have to be the same. If we're talking interviews, doesn't have to be the same individual every week. We can rotate it around to whomever can best speak to it and, and get our message out there. Okay. Chairman? Yes, sir. Sorry. Uh, just two caveats on it for it to work for us legally, the occupancy tax money has to be used to fund things that are directly related to and supporting of tourism. And two, the county has to get something out of it in terms of a benefit from the contract you know, with the media company, the county has to get a, a benefit from it. So it couldn't be necessarily entirely and only benefiting a private entity. We have to be able to craft this in a way that the county gets a benefit from it. So any spots that are aired or programs or things would have to be benefiting Warren County in its efforts to promote and support tourism. And also, Don, I'd like to mention, too, that these segments, um, once produced and approved, would be property of Warren County. So you could use them on your website to promote and use whenever you wanted to. I think we got that covered if they work through the tourism department. Yeah, mentioned Warren County tourism. Yeah. Okay. So we want to make a motion? Deb? Mm -hmm. Second? Gene? Any further comments? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Gary. 24,000 a year. We have to appropriate that. So can I have a motion to appropriate those funds? Gene, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Gary. Thank you, Walt. Thank you very much. Can I go home now? Oh, oh, we got a little bit more. Okay. Oh, yes. Michael, you're up, buddy. Tell it like it is. Good morning. Uh, first thing is, is that I do not have a report on occupancy tax collections. Um, 
because of the date of this meeting, it just doesn't fall with our collection cycle, which is the 20th of the month. So we really don't have anything to say other from what we did, what I reported in June. Um, but I will say that things are still looking very good. Um, uh, and at your next meeting, I'll have some more figures. And of course, the September meeting is always the one because that's when that summer quarter we get those payments in. So I really don't have much to say about that other than the fact that it's still up. We're still doing very well, um, way above what we did last year. Um, and my other thing is the Granicus contract. And just to bring you up to speed, we entered into a contract with occupancy tax money with Granicus to basically comb the internet looking for short-term rentals. Um, the, I wasn't real thrilled with the amount of information that we received. I thought we were going to be getting more. Um, but what we did receive and what we paid for, I think, was worth it. Um, it was $34,200, I think. And um, the amount of, we've more than paid for it with the additional collections that we've received from the short-term rentals. So we came out ahead on that respect. I would like to ask that the committee give me um, an indication as to whether or not they would allow us to enter into another year of contract with Granicus, not for the amount of what we paid for the initial contract. I would like to negotiate um, a lesser amount because obviously they found pretty much all the short-term rentals, but the additional information that they can supply to us over the year is what's really gonna help us. And to give you an example, um, we sent out 500 letters to places that we didn't have registered. The people would call, well, I just started doing short-term rentals last month and you know, what do I do and everything else? And my staff can look at the information that we get from Granicus and say, well, according to what we find, um, you've been doing this for three years. <laughs> so um, for us, it's a real good tool because then we now we can, and we've correct, collected an unbelievable amount of interest and penalties over the last few months from people that have voluntarily basically paid the interest and penalties from last year and the year before. So that's where this Granicus going forward contract would be very beneficial to us because we still would be able to look and see what people are actually doing. And, it, it, and it, believe it or not, it helps when we do our independent audits because we do audit um, randomly several of these um, every year. And with that information, it's interesting how much quicker they are to come up with exactly how much they owe us. So I don't have a, a, a figure. I mean, I would like to be at least half what we paid for this year. Um, but this is a negotiation point, and I don't want to start negotiating with Granicus if the committee isn't um, uh, interested in, in, in funding it. Kevin? Yeah, my, the towns that already have uh, the laws in place, how often do you give the information to the towns? Well, we did a big dump about three, four weeks ago, okay. and we're going to be doing it at, at, Kind of on at least six weeks to eight weeks okay. just but we want to make sure that we're just not giving you repetitive information right and if we still are finding people who just by happenstance a neighbor will say that this this place is short-term rattling and the last time you gave us the, the dump we had 10 10 new people we added to our list but we're so i mean i think it's important that the office keep communicating with the towns that have the license. It probably would be helpful that every community knew that they've got short-term rentals in there for safety reasons. Yeah, we yeah. gave we gave a complete list of everything that we had to every town. Oh, you did? Okay. Yes. And um, we plan on updating that as things go along. Um, and any of the municipalities that have permitting requirements, uh, well, first of all, if anybody calls my office and asks about it, we tell them that they also have to check with the local municipality, period, regardless of whether we know that the municipality has permitting systems, uh, just so that they can check. Yeah, and then it doesn't always go by the zip code. No. We have people with Lake George addresses that are in the town of Orange for several minutes. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, I mean, th this whole part of Queensbury is in Lake George zip code. So, yeah, we're... Um, I, I can't say 100%, but I'm 99.9% .9 sure that we have everybody in the right town uh, because we go, but we, 
convert everything over to a tax map number and then go from there as to the location based on that. Um, and when staff runs it, we'll probably come and ask me because I pretty much know where everything is in the county. Right. So, all right. Thank you. Yep. Anybody else, John? Yeah, I think Granite gets this proven to be very valuable, especially in this volatile market where you've got people screaming in both directions uh, about short term rentals. That having this information, I think, is important. I think we need to continue with them. I, I agree with John, Mike, but we don't use Granite and Mike George. We've got a different company and uh, we've been ex extremely happy with them. They're very aggressive and uh, they keep us up to date. You might want to check with them and see what kind of number they'll give you. Well, I, yes, I can, but you, you know, you kind of, we have everything set up because it's a, they basically hold the information and then we go to their dashboard to pull it down. And we, they have a very different type of software package that took us a while to try to get to integrate into our stuff. And, you know, I, I will look in, let me know who they are, but okay. uh, I, I would prefer to stick with Granicus right now, mainly because we've just got it all set up to work with them. I'm going to have Dan Baruch call you. Okay. Uh, and talk to you directly. Okay, great. Okay. So, Debbie? Who was the list given to? Was it given to the town assessor when you provide the town? No, it was sent to, to the supervisors in each town, except for the city of Glens Falls. I don't, I don't have that. Oh, well, I will make sure you get it within the next hour. All right, thank you. I'm sorry. I don't know what happened. Me too. Um, actually, we sent it to... Um, one of the members of the board, and I can't remember, McNulty? And McNulty, yeah. yeah. I don't remember seeing it. Okay, you want me to send you one, I will send it to you also. Yep. Great. So, tentatively, go ahead and come back to us when you've got Yeah, well, I, hopefully I'll come back the next next month, and then in the September board meeting, it can be approved if we get to that point. Because um, okay. the contract expires the end of September, so. Um, Excellent. Yeah. Okay. All right. Dennis, I have one for Mike, if you don't mind. <clears throat> Go ahead, Mike. Hey, hey, Mike, in terms of the way Granicus works, uh, I'm wondering how we deal with uh, repeat uh, renters that may not be something that they actually did an online um, online reservation. So we may not have any indication other than the fact that it may not be available. How, how do you deal with that? Uh, I, don't, I guess I, you're going to have to rephrase that, Mike. I'm not sure what you're asking for. So we're, we're tracking how many times, uh, not only uh, the properties that are rentable, but how often they're rented. And how do we identify whether they're rented or not? Is that because they're not available? Or is it because someone makes an online reservation? And the reason why I'm asking, if it's not available, it could be someone that's been coming there for years, same week of the year. Uh, so it's not an online reservation per se. It's just something that they have, and I don't know if we can really track that. Um, the answer is no, we really can't. There still is an awful lot about this that's on the honor system. Um, I mean, we we dig and we fight and we run around and I drive around the county and looking for places that might be, um, but no, it's still basically on the honor system. If they report it, we're good. If they don't and we see what they've already been doing, we can estimate what they should have been collecting. All right. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Dennis. Okay. Everybody good? No, set, Mike. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Jeffrey, you're up. Cool arena. Good morning. Um, yeah, our quarter two report, uh, you all should have it in your packets, but 23 events for quarter two of uh, – this year, um, five Thunder games. As most of you know, we did not qualify for the playoffs, so unfortunately not more Thunder events. Um, we did have our first Junior Thunder camp um, late April, and we're excited to say that the uh, the team will start play uh, mid-September at the uh, Cool and Sharing Arena. So that'll bring between 15, 15 to 20 more events to the uh, building here in the next year. Um, so that's moving along well. Glenn Murkowski is our head coach, the former Adirondack Red Wing. 
Um, so we're excited there. Um, we've been continuing to do Cornhole and Heritage Hall, and we're trying to make it a, a bigger event once or twice a year in the, the main arena. Um, we did the Glenfeld Brewfest last uh, last April, which I think was about 450 people attended, and there uh, were negotiations to bring them back. Uh, a number of graduations, they actually all came back this year. Between SUNY and BOCES, we lost for a couple of years due to COVID. Queensbury, South High, and Glens Falls returned this year as well. And then we just finished the Dance Explosion, uh, a big dance event. It's about 275 hotel rooms that we're aware of at the, at the Q and at the Fairfield. And we know there are some other hotels that had business, but unfortunately, we don't have that data um, at the moment. So just about 32,000 people attended events in quarter two. Um, and, and also, we did have the Brick and Benjamin concert, which was about 3,300 people attended, which is a, a pretty good event for us, especially on a Tuesday night in downtown. Um, we're close to being able to announce what we would consider a very big concert for the middle of November um, with Live Nation. We're extremely excited about that. And we have a couple more offers out for a couple other shows, um, December and then uh, first quarter of 2023. So uh, busy building for sure. The ice is in and I think there's a bunch of kids on the ice right now. Um, so we, we've got a really busy August for camps, clinics, tournaments, et cetera, going on. So, um, so the roof is done, which is great. Um, in the last couple of times it rained outside it the water stayed outside. So that's, uh, <laughs> we're pretty happy about that. <laughs> the suites are done. We're just waiting for a couple more, um, parts to arrive before we get our CO, but we've, we've had a great response to the suites. We think three of the five new ones were already going to be rented for the next season. Um, hopefully we'll have four out of five sold to a, a company for the whole year, which is great. And then the, the big suite will sell rent on a game by game or event by event basis. So, so we think that investment will pay off for us um, extremely well in the short and long term. So happy to answer any questions. Anybody got any questions for Jeff? Mike, you good? Okay. Thank you, Mike. Thank you all. For Jeff. Got it. All right. Gina, you're up with Lake George Regional Chamber and Convention Bureau. So I sent everybody an email in advance um, just uh -huh. so that you had our highlights because the report is robust and it goes through every detail of everything that we did. So in that, um, hopefully you got that on last Thursday uh, and had a chance to just, the email just walked through the, the highlights of each aspect of the report that included all of our sales activities, our marketing activities, uh, after action reports that we've received so far. That's an ongoing um, task is getting after action reports. Basically with those reports, we ask information from the planner, the event producer, as well as the hotels that are involved, and then marry those two together for a final report. So some of them that you might've seen might've been just from the planner or just from the hotel or one that's comprehensive. Then we also included the PL to show every, I mean, we do the PL every month for our board um, and that will show our cash flow um, and that, you know, all financials are separate as requested. Um, I didn't want to go into detail because I was told to be brief. So um, <laughs> I don't know if there's any questions on, um, I think we've provided every single report. Um, Anybody on the committee have a question? Kristen, do you have anything? Uh, yeah, actually I do. Um, what new business are you guys working on? So there's been a lot of affinity groups. Um, and what I mean by that are um, we're looking at right now. Um, so we worked on everything from Mini Coopers to a big camping event with um, Teslas um, and that same a lot of those came out of a specialty event that we went to last year and spoke with folks about team enterprises and other um, organizations. So right now we just had somebody at um, small market meetings. And so those are corporate meetings. Um, and we're working in conjunction with two planners from that on a fam tour at the Sagamore coming up in September. Um, so that event, that's a good question. Um, I don't know the, the organization names off the top of my head because I've been working on the specialty groups. Um, so coming up uh, next week, we go to connect. So we have, um, so far we've requested 47 appointments in the association market. 
17, 17 in the specialty market and 41 in the sports market. Um, one thing I would bring to the committee, probably not until next month with regard to your question, in conjunction with Hunden, is we are putting in for a grant, a state grant, where you have to put in for $250,000 or more, specifically in the sports market, for um, to do a three-year American Junior Golf Association event um, and working with seven golf courses locally. Um, that'd be $50,000 each year because it was something we did not want to bring to the occupancy tax if we could get the money from the state. Okay. through their um through their arpa funds for tourism so that would get us to 150 for that um the other one is a can am um that would not be until 2028 but it's hundred and fifty thousand dollar you know it's a five year you work on it for five years and then the other piece um shoot i just went blank it'll come back to me on that so we we got that up to um three hundred and fifty thousand dollars for that grant that we're working on that we wouldn't cut our, our tax for. So those are some major sporting events on the smaller side of those of, of the events that he you know also mentioned in Hunden and it came out in the study that we're working on is a lantern festival. Um, right now we're still waiting on the producer to, to say yes, we unbeknownst to Kevin, we, we came and looked at um, Warren County Fairgrounds and some other places in the in the off time. Um, so, and, and then some other locations that have where people could camp and, you know, have that open space. We looked at Lake George Expedition Park for that space as well. We looked at the Festival Commons, you know, again, in off season. So that was another piece that we're working on. And then, um, um, uh, we're, we're still waiting for um, DEC to let us know whether or not they would let us use Million Dollar Beach for a beach um, soccer tournament, where they, um, the event producer believes that he can set up six uh, soccer fields using Million Dollar Beach. Uh, that's when I called you about on to see, you know, whether or not DEC in the off shoulder season, um, they prefer to, to do it only during in season. Um, and that would displace actual beachgoers. So we don't know that we don't want to do that. So those are some of the things that are coming out based on the trade shows that we're attending and or just just attended. Are you seeing the association? We're seeing more of uh, the corporate market is coming back. The association world is coming back, but really small. Um, corporate is coming back a little bit bigger and they're flying very much under the radar. Um, so they've really focused on the courtyard, the Sagamore, the Fort William Henry, the Surfside. Um, not so much Six Flags has not come back with that corporate market. They've been very heavily invested in the wedding market. They put a lot of group business in their weddings. So we have done a lot in the wedding market more. We're not wedding planners. I just want to make that clear, um, but really helping with the finding the room blocks for the weddings that are booked because so many of our properties, whether they're just an event space versus a hotel, they don't really want to deal with Bridezilla in all honesty. They want to just focus on the event itself and not deal with the rooms, let people stay based on their budgets. A couple of questions too. Mm -hmm. um, just for the committee's information on the after action reports, say DCIC, what's the formula that is being used to develop those numbers for she um, okay, so I actually sent that to you and to everybody else in Warren County Tourism back when you were working on that application. Um, so basically, depending on the type of business it is, so if you're a tournament versus an association versus a corporation versus a special event, there's a linear equation that we um, utilize based on Destinations International, our national mothership of all Convention and Visitors Bureau, um, where it's a, a multiplier of the number of attendees, the number of room nights, and then the average amount spent for rooms, food, transportation, recreation, retail. Um, and um, so if you're a tournament, um, and you're um, an amateur tournament, kids versus adults, they actually spend more money, specifically on food more than anything, <laughs> compared to if you're an adult sports tournament. If you're an association, you spend less on your rooms than a corporation does. So a corporation will spend more on their rooms than your 
you know, association of counties or clerks, or you will spend less on your room nights based because many of them have per diems and other. So that calculation is different than if you're a corporation who will spend two to four hundred dollars an overnight for an overnight room. Um, if it's what we call SMURF, religious business, military, education, um, religious or fraternal, you will spend less money on your room night. You will spend less money on your food. You will spend less money on each of those segments. Um, so it's calculated differently. And I'm happy to resend that to everybody on the committee. So depending on we anything that's been over 150 rooms, then we run the EEI, we run the actual calculator. But if it's something that's, you know, a smaller piece of business, we just we have a, the linear equation in there. So the one that Kristen is referencing, the economic impact calculator, that runs everything. Now we need to know how much they're actually paying for space rental and other pieces of that that sometimes we can't always get. You know, like, so for instance, Jeff may or may not give me the amount of money people are spending for dance explosion. So I, don't, I can't always run that report to get all the factors that actually matter to run it properly, if that makes sense. Thank you, Gina. Do you have anything else, Kristen? We're all set. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hey, Dennis, it's Mike. Gina. Yes. <laughs> Is she still Hello. there? Hi, Gina. Sorry, guys. Hey, Gina, you know, I've observed some things and heard some things about what's happening this year in terms of our tourism industry. Can you just kind of give me a, what your perspective is in terms of how we're doing with respect to maybe last year and 19 and 18, you know, just, just general. Yeah, so I did send notes to um, Dennis and Ryan and just to point out some things that were happening that we were seeing in our um, in our Smith Travel Research Report that um, where our occupancy may be flat, the average expenditures are starting to come down. Those room rates are coming down right now. We hear that there's a little bit of um, a war within the village, uh, a rate war where things are starting to come down. You know, once one, one person comes down, another one does, which we don't really want to see. Um, we'd like to keep that integrity of that rate. Um, we've seen a big fall off on um, Tuesday, Wednesday, midweek stayovers that we didn't see at all last year. We really didn't see that during COVID. We're back to similar patterns as 2019. Um, and we're also seeing that within the campground space as well. Um, Lake George RV Park, Lake George Escape, um, um, Adirondack Camping Village. Although Hatopia and Lake Luzerne is an anomaly. They're their business is off the charts. Um, it's been a really different customer that has come to, to Hatopia. Um, so we're seeing, and we're also seeing less um, expenditures on food, you know, because of food costs. So if you've been that average family who's been here for three or four days, they're, uh, they've been, they're not out um, like four times. They may only be out two, but there's a huge line at the mini chop, you know, the price chopper in the village. Um, I can't really speak to the price chopper that's in Warrensburg. I don't know how, yeah, very busy. Um, so people are, are going to the grocery store and then cooking it all of, because during COVID, many hotel motels, all lodging, all bought grills, you know, because to keep families all together. So they're utilizing that and, and hitting our grocery stores for that. Um, um, there's a lot, there's a bit less boat rental business. And I don't know if that's because of gas prices as well. Um, we saw it shored up in June. It started then uh, because last year you still kids were not playing all their sports in June. They didn't have all that um, distraction or, or other opportunities where families were renting all of those boats every day. The, the lake was a 12 lane highway in the month of June. It was not this year. Um, so we're seeing the shoring up across every sector. Um, um, even when, you know, Martha say, you know, Dennis LaFontaine will tell you his customer account was down since May. I went by there last night and never seen so many people in one place in my life. <laughs> yeah, it was a nice and beautiful hot night. There was the parking place. Yeah, there. but that midweek is where they used to also see those lines and they hadn't seen them as much. Just Complete that answer side for you? point to Warrensburg Price Chopper is actually in Lake George. <laughs> as long as they keep sending their money to Lake George, I don't really care. <laughs> Thank you, Gina. Thanks, Gina. Anything else, Mike? No, that's great. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, we need a motion to approve their payment, quarterly payment. John? 
Second, Gene. Any discussion? All in favor? Kevin, you got something? No, I just want to talk to the committee before you. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Carried. Thank you, Gina. We'll be in touch. Okay, no referrals. Privilege of the floor. Gina. Just wanted to say that we completed our 59th Smoky Ears Jamboree this year. And I want to thank the tourism group for helping us out. We had another amazing, amazing crowd. We had over 3,000 people come in for two days up there. And um, uh, they've helped me every year. Uh, we don't take any county oxy tax money. We get it from the town when we finish up. But uh, we had people from all over who discovered us this year. We'll be back next year. So uh, next year will be 60 years in a row for fire company excluding the COVID, but it was, we were just packed. And uh, uh, thank you for what you do and tourism down here to help us out and the direction we're in. And uh, we, we had a really good year. We, we talking with my ride guy Friday night, it was down a little bit, not a lot, but we all know last year there was a lot of money giving out. And, uh, but we're gonna be on the even par with next year. 3,300 people for us in two days, that's a lot for, for our 24 members to do. So <laughs> thanks to tourism. Well, congratulations. And uh, I can say that talking with the uh, Oscars and Delhi and Meese were Jacobs and Tony, they're having fantastic years. So. Uh, Warrensburg is booming. I go up there a lot. And, a lot of uh, it's sometimes tough to get through. Go ahead, Craig. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It was brought to my attention that Marriott now has a short-term rental platform called Homes and Villas. So when you get a hotel giant coming into the short-term rental business, you know that it's a whole new landscape coming on with short-term rentals. Can't beat them, join them. <laughs> okay, anybody else, Gene? Uh, I wish we could do something about the traffic on 9N. I uh, had to go to Comstock uh, Saturday and... Uh, I bet you it took me 40 minutes to get down 9N to make a left on 149. Yeah. But when you got to the end there, the traffic was still backed up going south. So people coming off of 149, you know, then they move right in the middle of the road. You can't go either way. So it, it was you know, a lot of people. As the mayor said, a traffic jam is a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, privileges of the floor. We got anybody out there, uh, Don? Hi, Chairman Dickinson. No, we have nothing on YouTube. Excellent. I entertain a motion to adjourn. John, Debbie, we're done. Thank you very much.